Welcome to Battles of Faith. We're your host, Ivor and Atante Myers. Today's program is entitled, The Art of Stillness and the Art of Silence. Now, if you were watching last week's program, you learned that we are in a holy war. And as Christians, we need to realize that so we can learn how to fight back. And you're probably wondering, hey, they ended the program last week without teaching us any of the arts or how to fight. Well, we're going to start that process today. And we're going to start with the art of stillness. That's right. We have uh, in our studies seen that uh, holy war, talking about spiritual warfare, uh, is, is actually an art form. Uh, it, is, it is something that needs to be learned just as if you were in the military. Um, there are principles that need to be understood in this war against self. And we discussed many of these principles in our last program, and we're going to learn some more of these principles, but we want to focus in on two arts in particular, the art of stillness, and the art of silence. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that as we look at holy war and as we realize that we are called to fight this, this fight of faith, um, we have to understand that God is the one that empowers us with his grace. Uh, God is the one that enables us to fight this good fight of faith. And, uh, Atante, many times people... Um, don't understand that as Christians, we're not just called to fight an okay fight of faith, we're called to fight a good fight of faith. Um, if you have ever seen a good fighter, a good boxer, a good martial artist, a good athlete, they, a, a good athlete they, are, they are expert in what they do, and believe it or not, God calls us to be expert in war, to be expert fighters, to be masters, uh, as it were. I think of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25 and I want to read that verse because it says something very interesting it says every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things we are we are told here that as Christians we ought to be striving for the mastery that means Atante you and I should be striving for the mastery over ourselves because that's who we're trying to master we're trying to master self this is the conflict that we are that we are uh, engaged in it is the conflict against self and we're not only called to to fight against self we're called to fight a good fight against self and on top of that we're called to master self so that's excellent news that God actually calls us to be masters I know when I was in the martial artist I always wanted to achieve master status that meant that I was at the top of my art and that I would I was a an excellent fighter and beloved, in the grace of God, he calls us to master self, to dominate self. And this is exactly what we see as we begin to look at these various arts of warfare. I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25 from the Amplified. It says, Now every athlete who goes into training conducts himself temperately and restricts himself in all things. They do it to win a wreath that will soon wither but we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither. So there's training involved. Um, Paul is here saying that we have to endure some training if we're going to be able to fight uh, this good fight of faith. That's right. And, and the first thing that we have seen uh, that the Christian needs to be trained in is the art of stillness, the art of stillness. And I want to read from Psalm 46 and verse 10. The Bible says here, a very simple verse, be still and know that I am God. Be mm -hmm. still and know that I am God. Uh, stillness, Atante, uh, allows us to be able to recognize the divine presence of God. And in the world that we live in today, stillness is something that is very rare. And, and God calls us to understand that as warriors, um, the first thing that we need in, uh, in our side, on our side, when we are fighting against self, is we need the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And God has, has said in his word, be still. I mean, stop moving. Be still and know that I am God. And as Christians, many times, you know, many things that Satan tries to throw out there to the world, we don't follow. We're like, oh, no, I know better than that. The Bible says, don't do that. I don't do that. But as Christians, we still find ourselves so busy 
that we almost find it impossible to be still and have a quiet moment. That's right. The, uh, another very important reason, Atante, why we are told to be still is because that it, it is in stillness that God fights for us. And, and again, we can read Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17, to see this principle of stillness. And it says here, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye, and if you know the verse, you know what word comes next, stand ye still, still. and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Again, we see here this concept of stillness uh, um, providing that, that, that setting where we can sense and feel and understand the divine presence of God with us. And this presence, Atante, is so important for us because it is only by the presence of God that we can win the victory over self. So the very first thing to be able to engage in this war is to be still. Is to be still is to be still. Uh, Isaiah 26, 3 tells us, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed or stilled, stayed, remaining on thee. We, we receive that peace that we are looking for. Uh, we receive that, that peace in, the, in experiencing victory over ourselves when we keep our minds stayed, or I would say stilled, upon Christ. That's why he calls us to, to before any other principles are learned, he says, I want you to master the art of stillness. And we can look at today's society and see that um, many Christians are failing at this art of stillness. You know, I can hear mothers out there saying, how can I be still when I have all these little children which who are blessings, but they're running around constantly making noise, causing whatever kind of um, havoc, I guess, in the home. It's very hard to be still. But, you know, going back to what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25 says, you know, we have to train. And so we're going to have to be disciplined. An athlete, when they go to the Olympics, they get to the Olympics because they, have, they were very disciplined and they took time to train. And we're going to have to do the same thing as a mother to other mothers. Um, we most importantly need to be training to be able to fight this battle because we have to train um, our little children to do the same thing. And so I find that the best time to be still is to take that time early in the morning because that is the time where those little ones are still sleeping and we can have the still time with the Lord. But that means we have to go to bed early. It's really a lifestyle. To fight this war, it is really a lifestyle. Yeah. You know, some people may be, look, may be uh, uh, watching and saying, stillness, is that all there is to the art of war? Um, if you were to join uh, the military or uh, any other fighting system in, in, in the world, you are trained at levels. You know, you start out learning the basics and you move up, but you don't jump automatically to the top. And this, I believe, Atante, is the basics. Uh, God calls us to understand that it is in stillness, the setting of stillness, where every other principle is learned. Without stillness, the other principles that are vital to understanding how to overcome the cigarette, the alcohol, how to overcome the addictions to the entertainment industry, how to overcome these, these uh, plethora of, of um, uh, temptations that we go through, without that foundation of understanding how to be still, we can't learn the other principles. You see, it's in, it's in stillness that God's presence comes to us, and it's in God's presence that we begin to learn and understand how to fight that good fight of faith. And you know what? Sometimes if we're not willing to arrange our life so that we have the time to be still, God will ha allow things to happen to arrange that for That's us. Right. <laughs> I've That's seen right. that happen many times as you well. You know, Psalms 4 and verse 4 tells us, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. That's a place that we, where we can learn stillness. As we're uh, in our bed in the morning or in our bed you know, at night, getting ready to go to sleep, God says, take that time to practice the art of stillness. That means to, to just allow all the other things that cloud our minds to be taken out of our minds and to just slow down, to stop, to be still, and to seek 
for God's presence. And I think an, one of the major problems that we have as Christians, that the reason why we don't obtain this stillness is because we go into uh, communing with God um, with the wrong mindset. If we went in really believing that we were worshiping God, you cannot worship God and be on the move, if you will. Right. You have to have um, a time of stillness to worship a holy God and be in awe of Him. That's right. I want to read a quote here from the book Education, page 260, which really uh, um, you know, brings out this principle. It says, many, even in their seasons of devotion, fail of receiving the blessing of real communion with God. They are in too great haste. Mm. With hurried steps, they press through the circle of Christ's loving presence, pausing perhaps a moment within the sacred precincts precincts but not waiting for counsel they have no time to remain with the divine teacher with their burdens they return to their work wow that is very powerful you know what we see from this atante is that it is as we master stillness learning to be still in the presence of who the divine teacher that psalms 18 verse 34 comes to mind where he says uh, I'm sorry, not Psalms 1834, the text slips my mind, but he says, I will teach thee and instruct thee in the way that thou shalt go. I think it's Psalms 32, verse 8. God says, I will teach you and instruct you, and he will teach us and instruct us in war, the war against self, how to become masters. But before we can become masters at this active war of faith, we must first learn, coincidentally, the art of stillness. And, you know, in the quote, it says so many times they hurry and press through his loving presence. It's almost like we should be so, um, it, when it's time for worship to be over, we should, you know, slip out of it almost moaning like, oh, I don't want to leave his That's loving right. presence. And, and also it, it talks about, you know, we rush through it so fast that we don't um, r leave enough time for him to speak back to us, to commune with God, us talking to him and him talking to us. That's right. You know, Daniel 12 and verse 4 has a very interesting uh, um, uh, concept uh, presented to the reader, especially in the light of what we're talking about, because Daniel 12 and verse 4, it says, at the time of the end, many uh, um, uh, knowledge shall be increased, many shall run to and fro. And Atante, when we hear this verse spoken in, in a prophetical uh, context, we know that at the time of the end, uh, knowledge would be increased and, um, you know, society would begin to, to uh, multiply and technology and um, inventions would begin to, to, to increase. And that's a good thing. And it, some people also look at this verse as saying the knowledge of the Bible would increase in the last days. But I also believe that the running to and fro in the last days also has a negative context in the fact that we see a world now where people are just busy, caught up in the affairs of life, running to and fro with no time to be still. You look at the internet and television and media and, and everything that this world has to offer. Men are running to and fro, especially in these last days, eating and drinking, marrying, giving, giving in marriage, and, and just going about their, their, their business with no time to stand still and know that God is God. And I'm sure there's people out there who are very similar to myself who find it very difficult uh, to be still because our mind moves at such a fast pace. It's hard to just slow everything down. But my challenge to you, and I'm sure in God's challenge to all of us, is practice it. Give it, say, okay, Lord, I have a hard time being still and having a quiet moment with you. Do five minutes at a time and then up it to 10 and 15 and so on and practice like an athlete. Remember, we're training so that we can fight in this battle and in the war. Exactly. You know, um, there's an account, uh, Tante, where Jesus is casting out a demon out of a possessed man. And at one point in this account, Jesus asked this demon, what is your name? And the demon replies, my name is Legion, for we are many. And you see here the, the demon being named according to his characteristics. So mm -hmm. he, he was called Legion because he was many. Now, you know, this is not in the Bible. This is my own thing. 
<laughs> but, but I believe that there is a demon by the name of Rush, R-U-S-H. Mm -hmm. And this demon named Rush... And he has a first cousin named mm -hmm. Busy. He has a first cousin <laughs> named Busy, yeah. And, 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 you know, the demon of Rush, he is responsible for teaching us, for getting us into a rushed state of mind so that everything is about rush, 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 and, and, and with the specific purpose of never allowing us to have time to be still and know that God is God because it is in that stillness again. Stillness is the classroom in which we learn the art of warfare, in which we learn the principles of war that, that we'll be discussing in this series. But it is in this setting that the demon, you know, the demons of rust say, whatever you do, keep them busy. That's right. And God wants us to be still so that we can hear his voice. It is through his word that we receive power to overcome and to fight the enemy, which we know every day we're going to have to fight. Now that takes us to the next phase. Once you're still, you need to be silent. Right. And you know, we, this is a good transition because uh, when we look at Tante at the entertainment industry, everything is moving so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the movies, fast paced. Uh, the music, fast paced. Uh, the, the entertainment industry is a fast moving entity. And I believe that that has a lot to do with how we, in essence, live our lives. When we are continually being bombarded by these scenes of, of uh, you know, quickness, these scenes of everything is fast, everything is motion, everything is happening now, now, now. When we live in a society like that, it trains the mind to be busy. Busyness is a, is a state of mind. It begins in the mind. And if busyness begins in the mind, then stillness must also begin in the mind. And that's where prayer comes in. That's where we learn to be still in prayer. And that takes us over into the art of silence, the art of silence. God not only wants us to be still, but he also wants us to master silence. Why? Because in silence, we hear the instruction, the voice of God. And being silent, hearing God's voice, again, that's what empowers us to be able to fight. Um, you And, you know, many of us say, well, I don't hear the voice of God. We do. The Holy Spirit is leading us all the time. And sometimes we hear it when things are not so busy and not so... Um, loud, if you will. And, and most of the time we don't because our life is just on fast forward all the time and we just don't have, um, we're just not hearing his voice. That's right. Another quote from the book, The Ministry of Healing, page 58 says this, he that is God bids us be still and know that I am God. This is the effectual preparation for all labor for God. Amidst the hurrying throng, the strains of life intense activities, he who is thus refreshed will be surrounded with an atmosphere of light and peace. He will receive a new endowment of both physical and mental strength. His life will breathe out a fragrance and will reveal a divine power that will reach men's hearts. It is this being still, knowing that God is God, listening for his voice that teaches us, that, that prepares us not only to go out and fight the good fight of faith, but also to be a witness for those people around us, to have that fragrance flowing out from us because it is there that people then become attracted and say, whatever you have, that's what I want. And we get that, Atante, through learning how to be still and learning how to be silent to hear God's voice. Now, this is the real challenge because some of us can take time out and spend that quiet time in the morning and in the evening with the Lord when we get up and before we go to bed. But we're finding that the problem is, is when we get out of those special times with the Lord, it seems like we leave it at that time. How can we be still and silent going throughout the day, going to work, going to school, doing all the many different things that we must do? It's a training of the mind to be able to keep, and this is what Jesus had. He had the constant communion going on with his father where things around him were going on and he's talking to people, but he also, his connection was always flowing so he could hear everything that his father was saying. And this connects back to the entertainment industry. Again, this is, it's not that, um, uh, God just doesn't want you to, um, put, you know, just engulf yourself with the entertainment industry just because 
It is because he knows that if you're constantly feeding all that stuff into your mind, you're not going to be able to walk around throughout the day with that stillness and, and, and um, the silence and the stillness. And so if you have all that stuff in your mind, it's almost impossible. That's right. Stillness and silence, Atante, these arts are not limited to our prayer time. Even though in prayer time, understanding the art of silence is very important because many times we go down, we kneel to pray, and who's doing all the talking? We're doing all the talking. Right. We stop, we get up, we go about our way. We, we, we don't understand what it means to be silent, to hear God's voice speaking to us. Do we really expect God to speak to us? We're not talking about a, an audible voice. Isaiah 30 verse 21 says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. What way? The Bible tells us that God has provided a way of escape from every temptation. So in the midst of every trial, every temptation, if we listen close enough, we can hear the voice of God speaking to us saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. And so stillness and silence becomes something that spills out into our life. When everything is going chaotic around us, we are able to keep our minds still on Christ, stayed on Christ and silent so that we can hear. And this becomes crucial in the fight against self. And also being still and being silent helps to keep us in perfect peace. That's right. Which um, that's what the, the Bible calls us to do. And many times we're not in that way. And so we're moving around so fast and things are not peaceful in our minds. And here comes sin and we run right into sin. Sin is just waiting for us to come because he sees or Satan sees that everything is so chaotic and it's not peaceful. And so we just fall right into sin. That's right. We need to learn how to master peace in the midst of a crisis. Right. How do we master peace in the midst of a crisis? By practicing the art of stillness by practicing the art of silence. When we understand those things, we may be like Jesus in the boat in the midst of the storm, right. who when everything was going on around him, he was able to rest in peace. So something very interesting, Atante, when you think about a fighter, a, a, an earthly fighter, an external fighter, a person who is involved in fighting systems of the world, they understand that remaining calm in a fight is crucial. Let me read something here. It says here, this is speaking about what happens in a conflict and how it can, um, how it can uh, seriously affect any battle that you're in. It says at 115 beats per minute, talking about heartbeat, most people will lose their fine complex motor skills. At 105 beats per minute, most people will lose their complex motor skills. Uh, without complex motor skills, it is difficult to execute movement. Uh, to make matters worse, the part of the brain that hears also shuts down. This is mm. when your heartbeat begins to increase because you're in the middle of a conflict and you're not remaining calm. At 175 beats per minute, a person will experience tunnel vision and visual tracking can become difficult, um, opening a person up to multiple attacks. On an average, a person will experience a 70% decrease in their visual field during a violent attack and their heartbeat is, is, uh, is increased. Depth perception now begins to be lost and critical stress amnesia can occur, causing a person to forget up to 70% of the encounter. Mm -hmm. At 185 beats per, per minute, most people will go into a state of hypervigilance, meaning they will go into the deer in the headlight mode. Oh, right. Now, that's for physical fighting. How do you think it is when we are in the middle of a temptation and we don't remain calm, mm. our heartbeat begins to, to speed up. All of a sudden, we're in spiritual deer light or deer in the headlight mode. Sin is coming right at us, temptation is coming right at us, and we're frozen. And, boom. and because the temptation has such a grasp over us, we have not learned how to be still, how to be silent, and we just fall right into that temptation brought on to us by self. And let's keep it practical, let's keep it real, as the young people would say. I mean, this happens on a daily basis in the home. I mean, if we were experiencing that peace, that stillness, and that silence, when your husband or wife may say that thing to you, everything is in a much slower motion, you're so much more calm, you're gonna wait, hear God's voice, and respond. 
and, do, and if you're obedient to what God tells you to do, it is going to not cause whatever that person said or did to escalate and take it to the next level. It, that, this formula can be used in any situation. And That's this right. is what true uh, Christian fighting should be. That's right. Be still. Don't respond. Be still. Know that God is God. Listen for his voice. These are the very first steps, and God trains us in this through prayer. Another powerful quote. I, I got so many here, but Ministry of Healing, page 58, says this. All who are under the training of God need the quiet hour for communion with their own hearts, with nature, and with God. In them is to be revealed a life that is not in harmony with the world, its customs, or its practices. We must individually hear him speak to our hearts. When every other voice is hushed and in quietness we wait before him, the silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. uh, uh, concept there. Learning to be still, learning to be silent gives us that peace. And when we are in conflict, like Jesus in the midst of conflict, the Bible says that when uh, Jesus was in, in his last days and he's being questioned before Pilate, the Bible says that Jesus held his peace. Most people read that and say, oh, he didn't say anything. No, he held his peace. He held his composure. Mm -hmm. He held his connection with God because he had practiced, he had mastered the art of stillness and the art of silence. Amen. And that is what, th th this is what these programs are all about. We want to help with God's Holy Spirit and his power to train uh, people to experience this because it is this is powerful when people see that you are so connected to God and you are being still and silent so you can hear God's voice when you don't react in the way that the average person would react this is uh, a testimony this is um, what speaks to people and they say I want what you have I mean it's evangelism power mm -hmm. working and that's walking right. it's very powerful that's right that that other attack of the enemy Atante is that he will bombard our minds with mm -hmm. music with the programs so that we've got all these other voices in our heads when we kneel down to pray we cannot be silent why because those things are playing in our minds the latest and they, movie the latest movie the latest music Sitcom. and what we hear is the voices of the world and not the voice of God. And so we've got to understand that this is the beginning of the warfare. It may sound simple, but it is profound. The art of stillness, the art of silence, these are two arts of war that help us to learn how to master self. That's right. And remember, challenge yourself. Take time and allow God to train you in this art. It will take time, but with God, all things are possible. We're all out of time. Until next time, God bless.